Hi, gang. Hi. Hello. It's me, Ava Giss. The one and only. The one and only. I'm not gonna d do any more Juan jokes. That's for a bygone era. That's early 2000s shit. Uh, you know. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know. Listen, this one might be a lackadaisical uh, affair. This one might be a a brief affair? Who knows? I am frankly exhausted. <laughs> I, oh, I'm gonna put both my legs up. Look, look at these cool uh, leggings that I have on, these cool tights or whatever you call them. I'm the, you know, I was, I'm, this episode is gonna be so full of misnomers and um, in con unconcluded tangents. It's good. <laughs> Uh, why am I bedazzled, do you ask? Good question. Busy Giss is Busy Giss. And I, tonight, performed at the Comedy is Art Festival here in Toronto. It's a brand new festival um, in which we, uh, we being, uh, I guess me, on opening night, uh, have been tasked to prove that comedy is an art form. There's a lot riding on that, isn't there? <laughs> um, yeah. It is completely up to me to prove, government-wise, I guess. I don't know. Listen, in Canada, there are subsidies and grants, and there's all kinds of government um, help for different arts. And comedy, stand-up comedy specifically, and I think improv, and sketch... Comedy is just not considered an art form and therefore doesn't qualify for any of that stuff. So comedians get no help from the government, which, what do you do in government? Help. Help. Oh, please help. Just a little bit, just a crumb, just a crimmel, just a little crimple cramp of a little crumb of help it would be nice. But, um, and isn't that... Such a, you know, universally, top to bottom, comedy truly has this special place in the arts where it just does not get the respect that everything else does. Just by virtue of the fact that you can, I think, uh, lowbrow, the fact that lowbrow stuff exists, I think, ruins everyone's perception of the integrity of comedy. Because even bad drama takes itself so seriously that you kind of have to take it seriously as well. But, like, things even as sophisticated and nuanced as good, rich satire are not seen as worthy art because the alternative exists. Shitty satire and butt jokes and fart jokes. And I'm not saying that those are anything less than because those are the things that make me laugh the most. Butts and farts and poops and dicks and balls. Are you kidding? My best material is the dirty shit. I literally make the noise of a cock on stage and people lose their fucking minds. I impersonate a penis. It's hack as shit, but it rounds out the rest of my set. <laughs> um, it does. I am, uh, I have a headache. I've, I'm overworked. Uh, it is currently, it's currently the stroke of midnight. It's about to happen. Count down with me. Ten. Nine. Eight. I don't see a clock. All I see is 11.59, so I'm just kind of... Just guessing. Seven. Six. Five. This is fun, isn't it? This is entertaining content. Four. Here comes more into three, two, one. It's mi New Year's midnight. That's why I'm all bedazzled. So I'm all bedazzled because I did a comedy is art festival and I really wanted so bad to prove that comedy is indeed art. You know? God, my head feels clogged and it hurts. Um, but there was a line that I said off the top that was, um, ah, th there's a word that I'm looking for that was like, the the fate of the art form rests on my shoulders tonight you know 
It's a pretty big thesis that comedy is art. Comedy just never gets the respect. Comedy in, in what? The Academy and Oscar Awards always has to... It's like comedy and musical. They lump comedy in with musical? How disrespectful. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm going to take a fat shit on musicals. I don't give a fuck about those. Those aren't art. Fuck that. I mean, they're art. Yeah, I take that back. They're art. But... Comedy is art, too. Comedy belongs on in its own goddamn category because it's so broad. And it is so... It's such a... If being a musical guy ta it takes training and talent and years of hard work and expertise in your craft, then so the fuck does comedy. Easily. Absolutely it does. So, anyways. It is silly that comedy never gets that respect. You know, even though like comedians, listen, this is, this might be a little, uh, um, I don't know, self-indulgent, but I feel like comedians historically have a pretty good track record of, um, moving seamlessly between drama and comedy and doing a good job. A lot of famous comedians have pretty much just like stepped across the threshold and done horror, and done whatever else, drama-wise, and and just settled right in to their own as good dramatic actors, whereas, um, oh, you know what, I shouldn't make generalizations, because the opposite has been found to be true. Really good dramatic actors, kind of, sometimes, ugh, you know? <laughs> I would say comedians have more of, a, more of an advantage, but maybe that's just me gassing up my own um, tribe. So look, look at my face. Look at how, look at this makeup. Ding, 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 ding blink. Mm. Uh, she worked really hard. She tried really hard. She's all bedazzled. I'm not going to stand up. Don't make me. I'm not going to show you what I'm wearing. Um, it's a, This is a thing. These, these, what are they, what do you call them, halter tops? I don't know, these neck tops that go up around your neck and they show your shoulders, but they go up around your neck. It looks good from this angle, but um, this is the thing. Trans women, and I am, of course, no exception, myself especially, not just including, but especially me, um, we, we've been known to have broad shoulders. We've been known to be a bit... Uh, inverted triangle shape, a little bit bulky up top. Um, and I'm, of course, no exception. I am what I am. Um, and so I, when I wear tops like these, I always get so self-conscious that it's like making my shoulders look super, super broad. And so I got to wear a big old push-up bra and make my tits look huge just to kind of give it some proportion. <laughs> uh, anyways, but this is the thing. <clears throat> This is, uh, I didn't even, I haven't brought this up at any point, but I think it's worth mentioning that the things that I'm most insecure about, did I close my bedroom door? Yes. The things that I'm most in, insecure about, um, I, I'm, I'm insecure about them. And then cis women will, will go, oh my God, that's the one thing that I envy about you the most, your arms. Girls, so many cis women are just like, your arms, I'm jealous of your arms. And, and you know, they're just, they're fucking Titanic. I look like, I look like I could lift a car above my head. I have Hulk arms. And I'm not particularly proud of them. But this is the thing, is I'm attracted mostly, with some, with, with exceptions, I'm mostly attracted to dudes. And I've never gotten a compliment about my shoulders from man. So it's one of those tragic things where all the people who find this characteristic of me physically are not the ones that I am pursuing. <laughs> you know? Anyways, I got a lot to catch you guys up on. So enough with the preamble. Enough talking about my insecurities. I know you guys just, you love it when I do though, don't you? I love it when she talks about the things that she hates about herself. It makes me feel not so bad <laughs> about myself. Yeah, you just eat up my insecurities. Just feed on my fuck. All right, anyways. um, 
what an what an interesting position it is to be in to um to platform my my insecurities and to talk openly about all the things that worry me and and bother me and consume me psychologically and people just and it's manna for other people you know my misery is manna that's kind of cool not enough manna my misery is manna for people so enjoy um it helps me relieve some of it too to be fair that i didn't want that to sound like a cry for help anyways um what a week i've had so uh tonight i proved that comedy is indeed art so there you go you're welcome comedians i think i bought us another three years before we get fucking lumped in with musicals again god i hate that shit Especially because I'm not a fan of musicals. I don't really like them. Some are good. The occasional one is good. But do not. It's torture to sit me down and make me watch Grease. Ew. Oh, it's so cheesy. I can't bear the cheese. Okay? Can't handle the cheese. Not for me's, please. No cheese for me's, please. Um, oh, Grease. Fucking what musical do I even like? I saw The Lion King live. I saw The Lion King musical. That was cool. But like movie musical? There's got to be one. Everybody likes Rocky Horror Picture Show. I've never seen it. I've seen some of the clips and I'm like, eh. You know? I wonder what I would think of now. Of it now, you know? I'm pretty sure back then, if I had seen it back then, every time I saw any images of it, I would always be like, oh, you know, it like peaked that, um, it peaked the, the closeted me, the curiosity closeted me. I can't articulate myself tonight. I feel it. Um, but I'm not going to waste a look. I look glammed out. So I'm going to fucking, we're going to. We're gonna barrel through this, I promise. We're gonna get better. I'm gonna get better. Here we go. Um, I gotta catch you guys up. Arctic Comedy Festival. I did the Arctic Comedy Festival. I was in Iqaluit, Nunavut. I was up there in the north, and um, I flew up on Canadian North Airlines, right? I think. Um, which only, it does like four, four to six flights up there a day. Four, maybe. I think on the way back I saw it was just us and three others for the spanning across like three hours and that was it. Um, Iqaluit's population is 9,500. No, mm-hmm, uh-huh. And we got there. And I, and I won't speak, I will choose my words carefully about the Arctic and about Iqaluit uh, specifically, because a lot of the people that I met there were lovely. However, tundra, tundra as a biome, not for me. Not a fan of tundra. Because it could come up to be, say, algus. Avagus. What's your favorite biome? And I'll say, certainly not tundra. <laughs> I don't know what I would say. I like a good marsh. I like a good marsh, a swamp, a swampy marsh. I like a marshy swamp. Those are, uh, you know, I could, I could have either or. I like them both. Um, I like a good... Meadow, I like a good, I like a good tropical beach. Of course, who doesn't? But I'll tell you, it takes a special kind of lunkhead to love a tundra. Sorry I called you a lunkhead. Maybe it just takes a special kind of, you know, you just, I feel like tundra has to be one of the things you have to have grown up around, maybe, in order to have that fondness and appreciation for it. like a prisoner appreciating the poo stain on the corner of his cell. 
<laughs> hey, that's my poo stain. That's my poo poo stain. Me and that poo poo stain go way back. Back to night one when I was here. That's my poo poo stain. <laughs> that's my homeboy. That's how I think people from the tundra feel about the tundra. It's just not for me. And I live in a, and I live in a concrete jungle. I live in a metropole metropolis. We got there in the end. Struggled. I live in a metro uh, I live in a concrete jungle. I live in a metropolis. And surely people who live in a tundra, people who live in the Amazon, people who live in any kind of rural area would probably look at the way I live and they're like, ugh, not for me. Various shades of gray, very rectangular. But here I am going to Iqaluit to the Canadian North and looking out and seeing patches of brown. Not just patches, it's all brown. Just different patches of brown on brown. Brown on brown is the color scheme of the tundra. And, um, and that's it. I mean, I saw a uh, bunch of dead seals. I saw a bunch of angry huskies that I was warned not to touch or speak to. We stayed in the car. We drove by these huskies that were all just standing, standing around. And they said, don't, don't you dare, Ava. Don't you dare. Don't get out of the car. We know what you're thinking. We can hear you squishing around in the leather seats, agitated as fuck because you want to get out and you want to give a little cutie pie a little scratch behind the ears. Don't do it because he's going to chomp your hand and you're going to be rolling around bloody on the tundra ground like these other seals that are there that are dead. Dead seals. But listen, liberals, don't come for them over there. That's all they got. We can let them have it. I think. I don't know. Why don't we stick up for an ugly species for once? You know what I mean? <laughs> of course it's the cute ones that everybody gets all fucking angry about when we're hunting them. Let's see you get as passionate about the fucking glunk fish in the deep Atlantic Ocean. Let's see you get passionate about the anglerfish, the one with the big light on its head and the underbite that goes like this, this ugly fucking throaty thing. Uh, swimming around in the ocean like this. Let's see you be passionate about that. I know baby seals are easy to defend, but I want to see if those fuckers get endangered, you better all get out there in droves. I want to see you on the steps of every government in the world, making faces. We gotta stop hunting the anglerfish. They're so beautiful. Protect ugly species. That's what I say. Put your money where your mouth is, environmentalists. Protect the ugly ones. <laughs> Protect the ugbos. Yeah, pandas are cute. Bumblebees are cute. But look, if wasps were going extinct, would anyone care? No. Let's look up some extinct species right now and find out. Let's play a game called Which is the Ugliest Endangered Species? Which is the ugliest, the ugly one, endangered species? Cheerleader! So, oh, the blobfish. <laughs> it's the blobfish! Does anyone really care about the blobfish? Maybe it's like a, a, a perfect circle effect, where, or like a horseshoe effect, where something gets so ugly that it becomes interesting again and compelling to us. So maybe I'm wrong. These were voted, wow! National Geographic on May 4th, 2016 took to YouTube and it's a one minute video. You know what? I'm getting dunked on here by a simple Google search. The blobfish was named the world's ugliest animal. There have been votes on the five ugliest animals. 
The blobfish is so ugly. Every blobfish's name is Herman. That's such a Herman-ass face. Look at that nose. That's so Herman. These were voted the ugliest endangered animals. Posted by National Geographic. It's a minute seven. This video. According to the ugly... According to the Ugly Animal Preservation Society. That's a group. You can acronym their name. UAPS. That's how you know it's for real. The world's ugliest animal. The blobfish is is so hideous that it's adorable in its own way. It looks like its name is Hermann Schrenschk. Herman Blobfish. The public voted these endangered animals as the world's ugliest. I have the sound off. Proboscis monkey? Oh yeah. Look, it seems like there's a pattern here. First of all, the proboscis monkey's got a big ol' fucking schnoz. You should, please, if you are, if you have access to data or the internet, search along with me, please, while I, while I talk about this. Proboscis monkey, he's got this fucking cock shaft of a nose just dangling over his mouth. Uh, his, his lower lip is like a ball sack and his nose is a big old cock. Comedy is art. That's what I just did just now. What I just did was art. Um, proboscis monkey. That's number five. Oh, look at these ugly fuckers. Males have large noses, which may help them attract females. Uh, oh, yeah, I gotta love this. The titty caca water frog is number four. T-I-T-I-C-A-C-A. Titty caca. Titty caca water frog. Um, looks... How would I describe it? It looks like it's... It looks like a dorky scientist. Like, fifth in the chain of command in his wing of the science bureau or whatever. He's like the fifth down-the-line science scientist. And he snuck into the lab in a hoodie. And, uh... He, d he didn't take into account that the motion sensors and the lights would go off when he snuck in. And so he looks shocked in his fucking hoodie. That's what he looks like as, a f as an animal. Oh, God, and he's all wrinkly and rumply. Oh, and the hoodie is like eight sizes too big. It's a duvet. It's just wearing the frogs. It's just folded all. It looks like a plastic bag with a severed frog's head just sort of like you're pushing it out like a like a t tube of toothpaste. The frog's excess skin allows it to breathe underwater for long periods of time. Because the surface area, because of the folds. Alright, so big noses are ugly. Big honking schnozzers. And then rumply skin. So there's there's no wonder why old people are so disrespected in our society. We're like two for two on old folks. Okay, who's number three? The axolotl. The axolotl's cute. The feathery protrusions on each side of its head are grills. Axolotl. I know of this creature. A-X-O-L-O-T-L. -O -O it's like a salamander with like cool feathery dreadlock horns coming out of its head. And then it's got a cute little reptile face. Sure, it's albino, but let's not be racist, you know? The feathery protrusions on each side of its head are gills. The kakapo is number two. Yeah, I guess it's kind of ugly. K-A-K-A-P-O. It's got a beak that's pointed straight down, so right there. Yeah, kind of ugly. How do you eat like this? I guess you, if you were, like, to eat straight from a plate, you wouldn't have to take your eyes off your opponents. It's a bird with a beak that's just pointed 90 degrees down to the ground. This gentle, flightless bird can grow to be more than 2 feet long, weigh 13 pounds, and live about 95 years. Yeah, then the kakapo is cute as shit. And then number one is the blobfish. The Ugly Animal Preservation Society's mascot. Wow. 
Big honkin' schnauzer on that guy. Big honkin' schnauzer on that, bud. With virtually no bones or muscles, its body gets structural support from its extremely pressurized underwater environment. So why the fuck are you taking him out? That's why it's turning into a giant big honkin' schnauzer blob. Oh, look at these poor guys. They look... I mean, the fish's default face is one of despair and anomie and uh, <laughs> Kafka-esque. That fish has seen some Kafka-esque shit. <laughs> the blobfish is so Kafka-esque. And then there's this picture of three blobfish on a tray. Well, of course they're going to look ugly as shit. You took them out of their naturally pressurized underwater habitat and now they're a blob that's insulting that's like taking human beings a thousand leagues under the sea and having their fucking lungs crumple and their bodies just crumple under pressure and be like yeah that that's a crumply biped the old crumply crumply foot that species we're calling it crumple foot because of how crumpled it is it's got a little foot it's got a couple feet fucking good old crumple foot over here uh, we would be mad as a species okay anyways god my head hurts um so that was the arctic <laughs> the world's biggest animal may be getting bigger Ooh, clickbait thanks national thanks ng ng's my homie girl Oh, my head. But I look, I mean, from this angle, I look elegant. I just have to figure out how to cinch my waist and make it, make my hips look bigger. I think that's it. That's my real issue. What else? Vancouver. Uh, I went to the Arctic. I went to Vancouver. Oh, yeah. So the Arctic Comedy Festival, that, that was fun. Uh, it also made me reflect on... You know, speaking of species, us us Caucasian Toronto-centric Torontonians, we're an invasive species up there. And so, you know, who am I to come in and 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 judge the tundra? This fucking of course you could be like classic whitey shit over here. Yeah, she can't handle the tundra because she's a privileged piece of shit. Like I get it. <laughs> and I get it. I'm not saying I'm not a privileged piece of shit, because I am. But, um, I don't think it takes a privileged piece of shit to acknowledge that the tundra is barren. It is objectively, descriptively barren. And that's not a good word, usually. <laughs> no one's like, this delicious angel cake is so barren. What a barren slice of cake that was. Yeah, I called that cake barren. Fuck it. Um, so Vancouver. What else? I, you guys. Ah, shit, man. Like, I want to be funny. But it's late and my head hurts. And on stage, I can usually get some, uh, what is it called? What do they call it? Performers, uh, and performers adrenaline, performer health, stage health, where like your adrenaline kicks in and you take over and you, and you just, and you, and you make it work. And I've never not made it work, but tonight it's just not, uh, my brain is not cooperating with me. I will tell you this story. Maybe I just need prompts. I'll tell you this story. Oh, see, this is all... Okay, I, I should talk about all this stuff. Um, tales of... Tales of travels. Travel tales. Travel tales. Travel tales. That's the Veggie Tales theme song. My little sister used to watch that show. I used to think it was funny. Except now looking back, it's all religious and that's weird. It's all religious and that's weird. Veggie Tales was fun. The theme songs were great. The songs were funny. It was a silly show. But religion is weird and religion is bad. <laughs> so it's all weird and bad. Um, okay. 
Um, fucking... On my travels, when I was in Vancouver, I was in the airport, as one is known to be doing. Uh, I was in the airport, and I was in the washroom, and there was this lady who did all the wrong things in the washroom. All the wrong things. If people are going to get mad at me for being in the women's washroom, we need to exercise at least a little bit of protocol for how how to interact with the environment. If people are mad at me for being in the women's washroom, the idea of it, no one's gotten mad at me in the women's washroom yet because, spoiler alert, I go in there to piss and shit, I mind my own business, and then I wash my hands, and then I leave. Isn't that fucking crazy? Oh, wow. Um, so, ugh. There was this lady who, uh, there was a long line of doors and, and, uh, she was next and, <laughs> and she, and one of the doors was ajar. It wasn't ajar. It was a door, but it was open. And so she went, she went into the thing and came back out like two seconds later and kind of like, oh. Just sort of a little bit weirded out. And so I, out of, out of curiosity, I went up and I and I went in and I checked the stall door and it was bro busted. The latch was busted and it opened both ways. And so it was, it was just unusable. That stall was unusable. So I stepped back out and went to go like rejoin the line of, of ladies waiting for stalls. And this lady... Saw me step back out of the stall that she just left for the same reasons, presumably, or at least I thought. And then she brushed past me to go back into that same stall that she knew the latch was broken on. And as she walked in, I was like, hey, just so you know, the latch is broken. The door doesn't close. And she went, uh-huh. <laughs> she went, huh? And then went in. And then emerged again two seconds later to be like, what? what? It's just... The most confused lady of all time. And then later when I was washing my hands in the sink. Uh, or I was next again. I found myself behind her again. She got she got there ahead of me. And uh, she was washing her hands in the sink. And the towel dispenser, the paper towel dispenser was right there beside it. And she, she did the motion sensor correctly. So it went. And it gave her a little bit of paper towel. But she just kind of like gently caressed it and stared at the box and did this for a solid 10 seconds, just like looking at the box, looking at the paper towel, just kind of like, huh, eh. and I don't, I don't think she's ever been in a washroom before where you're supposed to rip the thing because she didn't know to just rip it, just tear the thing off so she took her two hands i'm not fucking kidding you guys she took her two hands and went halfway up the paper towel and started going ksh, 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 and meticulously tearing off half a shred of the paper towel and this took and she stood in the way of this one sink so everyone in this washroom myself and uh three other women waiting for the sink we all stood there very politely just kind of furrowed brow observing this spectacle of this woman who has never torn a paper towel off in a bathroom before. And I to, part of me feels privileged once again. Maybe there are people out there who have never engaged in a motion sensor tear off paper towel thing. However, it was just a really special bonding experience between myself and these three other ladies where we just sat in polite silence for a solid minute, a solid minute, while this lady was just like, ah, 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 <laughs> and none of us maybe 
it's a very Canadian thing. But none of us, none of us bothered intervening. None of us bothered. Uh, I don't know if helping is the right word because I think this is the thing. The vibe, the vibe on my part, and I think the vibe with the other, these other ladies, the vibe was one of incur- silent encouragement. Like you'll get there, lady. You'll get it. You're almost there. You have the right idea. You're tearing. You're tearing in a very odd way. You're tearing in your own unique way. And you know what, sister? Good for you. Good for you. Have confidence, bitch. Confidence, bitch. Tear it. Tear that paper however you want. There are no rules. I mean, there's a correct way of using it. There's an intended way. I take back correct. There's an intended way. But the intended way isn't necessarily the correct way. And such is life. The intended way to do something isn't always the necessary, quote unquote, correct way. Who's to say you can't motion censor a new roll of of paper towel and just stand there gawking at the box for a while? That's your prerogative. As a red-blooded American, do it. Stare at that paper towel. I mean, the people behind you have a right to be a little annoyed. But fuck them. That's the American way. Since when do us Americans, since when do we care what other people think? Individualism. That's the name of the game. Yeehaw. Can I go to hell, yeah? Hell yeah. Where's that goddamn blobfish? He's an American hero. Ugly motherfucker. But he's free. Free the blobfish. Free the blobfish. Oh, my head. All right, I'm calling it. It's 12.30 at night. I am um, battle-worn. I am weary. I'm doing this because... As you know, this is late. This is a late episode. I thought I would have enough energy and time since I got back from Vancouver, but it, it indeed I have not. And uh, I offer you my sincerest apologies for just how I'm going to say it. I'm going to I'm going to hold myself to a standard. I'm going to say it. I disappointed myself tonight. But I but I gave it a college try. And I showed face, and I was present, and I tried, and you heard you heard my voice, and you heard that I'm practicing. I think this is this is one thing real quick. We're doing this at 12:30 at night, after a long day, after a show. My roommate is not home, which, uh, to be honest, makes me a little bit more settled in. Nothing against him. But this is the thing. There's a hang-up when it comes to practicing vocal feminization around people who have known me longer. It's just weird. It falls apart. It feels a little disingenuous. So there is um, a part of me that needs to get over that psychological block, you know? Because, and 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 I'll let myself off the hook, too, around people who I love because I'm like, they're, they're, those who... Those who mind don't matter, and those who matter don't mind. In the words of Dr. Seuss. So, like, it doesn't matter how I fucking sound to my best friend. However, that shouldn't stop me from trying. So, anyways. um, When he's not present, when I'm alone, at the end of the day as well. When I've, when I've, when I've had, when I've had a little experience practicing, when I've been practicing a little bit. It, um, it feels like it comes across a little easier. It does by the end of the day. So you tell me if this is progress. It feels like it. Maybe this is part of why my head hurts is because I'm pinching too hard. That is a tale for another time. I got to shut up. I got to drink water. I got to take off this makeup. I got to throw on some pajamas. And I'm going to go go pass out. Um, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for toughing this one out. It's a tough guess. Good old, I just blob fished it up. I blob fished it up on this one. And I'm I'm not afraid to admit it. What a waste of a good face. <laughs> what a waste of a good look. Just squandering it, fucking meandering around and complaining about my headache. But I'm the realest one there ever was. I I am and always have been. And one of these days I'm gonna get a microphone that makes more sense. 
to, you know, hold than this. But we're improving. She's she's business girl. She's business girl and she's doing her best and she's improving. So, okay. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for toughing it out. Thanks for sticking with me. I won't be overly critical about this. Maybe I need to just shut the fuck up and let things be. But um, you will get a better episode uh, next week. I promise. Um, thank you for tuning in. Um, yeah, thanks. Bye.